Good morning. I'd like to congratulate everybody here this morning. Glad to see everyone from the church, both the church of Christ. You know, um, I'd like to encourage everyone to be encouraged. You know, Jesus is our rock, our shield, and that's what we're here for. The worship of Him is really true. This is one place where you can relax and enjoy, learn God's Word. And this invitation I will go for our Zoom listeners, Facebook listeners, and others. So we would like to, again, welcome you. But that's all just our voice. Sing and pray to him, but Jesus is the reason for all of us. With that being said, I would like to uh, pray to you for the lady who will be leading us in silence. Good morning. We will turn to page 166. Page 166. Page 166, he's my All day long, of Jesus I am singing. He is the son of trouble and be. All the while, he keeps my heart from breaking. All his love is everything to me. He is my king, and no oh, I will love him. He's my king, no other is above him. All day long, in rapture, praise I sing, I sing. He's my savior, he's my king, my blessed king. Praise the Lord, oh well, my soul is going. God is not the devil that was That is my in my soul, that is why I do my song as well. He's my king, and oh, I can love him. He's my king, no other is my brother. All day long, in a rapture, praise I sing, I sing. He's my savior, he's my king, I'm blessed king. Yes, I, I'm going on to glory with the souls whose Christ is saving grace. We're going on to sing and thrill the story. In the night, six times when I get praise. He's my king, and oh, I can't let love him. He's my king, no other is above him. All day long, in rapture, your grace, I sing, I sing. He's my savior, he's my king, I'm blessed to be. Page 666. Page 666. Page 666. I'm dying, oh Lord. I am thine, oh Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the hour of faith and be close to call to thee. Coming nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Coming nearer. 
Good morning, church. Let us go to God in prayer. Merciful, gracious, loving, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for being our God. We give you the honor, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, for we know that it is in you that we live, move, and have our very being. It is you who have loved us, blessed us, kept us, and sustained us. You have blessed us in so many ways. And we say thank you for all those blessings and those yet to come. We lift you up this morning and we worship you and we pray that as you are exalted and magnified, we will be strengthened and edified. We thank you for our lives, for our health, and for our strength, and for this chance to come together once again to honor you, to bear witness of your glory, your blessings, and your power in our lives. May you continue to bless our congregation here at Wolf Chase. Bless us all that we remain steadfast in our faith and hold on to your unchanging hand. Bless our families and loved ones. Bless the sick and the shuddering. Keep them in your care, Heavenly Father, as you wrap your healing arms around them. Heavenly Father, we ask for comfort and healing for the saddened and the bereaved. Heavenly Father, at this time, we ask that you reach down and touch your manservant, Brother Eldridge, as he comes forth shortly to bring us another portion of your word. May you give him the clarity and the conviction to be able to reach and teach those who need to hear this message, Heavenly Father. We pray that this message will resonate with each of us as we strive to bring lost souls to Christ. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to be with us Guide us and bless us with the encouragement to keep your commandments more faithfully so that we approach your throne, we may rejoice with you greater and greater. Your glory may abound more and more each and every day. These and all blessings we ask in the Son of Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Page five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven. Crystal, my spirit, Lord, I need Crystal. My heart is weary. Please help me to know. I stand in need of your strength. Page 959. 
Blessing us and giving us this opportunity, and I'm thankful for you to be here and making a decision to worship our God. Um, it's as it's, it's, it's strange as it sounds. Now, worship your God is an option, it's a command of God, it's an option of Him, and then we choose to or uh, choose not to. So all of you are joining this morning, whether you're here or online, if you chose to worship God, thankful for your presence and thankful that you made the right decision. All right. And I pray that good will come to us because we made a decision to worship our God. God has been good to us. And we ought to be reminded that it is God who has blessed us and not we are our own selves. And, you know, had it not been for God, and you just feel the blank. There were so many things that would not have been possible today, this morning, had it not been for God. Yeah. And so we're thankful to our God. Yeah. And I pray that 
as we worship him, as we glorify him, as we honor him, as we seek to glory, to bring glory and honor unto him, that he might be pleased with what we do here on this morning. I want you to see with me number 867. Eight hundred and sixty-seven. Hands land, I'm on my way. Hands land. So eight hundred and sixty-seven. To the kingdom stand, I am on my way. Chapter 
or lying to the community. The curse of church, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead as his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. The Esther and the season, out of season, the cruel, the duke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Paul writing to Timothy as a source of instruction to Timothy for helping the church. He says in verse 3, he says that. For the time will come when they will not endure a certain doctrine. But after their own loss, they hate to themselves, teachers having its ears, and then they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto the faiths. They will turn from the truth. So, what I want you to do, Timothy, with an understanding that, 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 that there are those that can turn from the truth. He says, the instant that idea is be ready, always ready. In season, out of season, that being be ready always. That want to reprove, to do, to go up. Be long suffering. He says, and then he tell him what to do it with. He says, the doctrine. Tell them, what, tell them what, the, what God says. It is Jesus in John 17 when he prayed to his father. And he said, Father, as he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he's praying for his disciples, he says, I have given them thy word. This understanding that it is the word of God. Even Jesus emphasized that in his prayer that the words you gave me, I gave them. What's interesting about that is, he says, I want you to take those words, I want you to preach it. I want you to use it. I want you to use it and I want you to reprove. I want you to rebuke. Look, 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 the, the next phrase kind of get a little bit lost in him. We want you to exhort. The word exhort is actually encourage. You see, I want you to encourage. Then you take the word of God and I want you to encourage with God's word. Reprove, yes, those things correct. Those things that's out of whack. Both that have done that change what God said. Put it back in order. Those who are aligned with God, we group them. But at the same time, I want you to encourage. I want you to exhort the doctrine. Take doctrine and exhort. Because sometimes, y'all, people of God need to be encouraged. I was thinking about we're in February 2022, and we are two years, right at two years in this pandemic. When the first case started about two years ago, in January, in America, the first case. And yet we are two years down the road to go from the case of COVID to uh, a pandemic. It was all over the world. But all of them, but in America, we had over 900,000 people today. Can I tell you that that could be, that could be people who disturb, that people who we know, people who we know have passed. And then there are those that we don't know. And then there are people who have lost, not just family members, but the whole thing. Mom and dad and uncle and aunt. And people become discouraged. And 
not only 900,000 people died, but over 78 million people have been affected in that they contracted the disease. But it affected more people than that because of the, the people, all of us, all of us, probably have somebody or know somebody that has been affected. And it affects us. And then on top of that, just life. Day to day life. See, life continues. Day to day life continues on, on the, it doesn't matter whether you've been affected with COVID or, or somebody you know has been, or, or somebody you know has died from it. All the other circumstances of life are still there. And so sometimes in life, life will beat you up. And life can have life can weigh on you to the point where it, it beats you up and weigh, weigh on you. You throw your hands up and say, "I give up." I want to encourage you this morning, that I like. I tell you about Paul. Is Paul writes to the church, and Paul always writing messages to the church about to encourage them. All kind of message Paul write to the church, but I think one of the greater messages Paul wrote is in Philippians chapter four. In Philippians chapter four, you know one of the things Paul does in Philippians, if you read the book, of the, 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 uh, the book of Philippians, you don't hear a lot of Paul. As he did with a lot of churches, is correcting stuff and rebuking stuff. You don't hear a lot of that in, in Philippians. What you hear more than anything is encouragement. You know, it is Paul that says in Philippians 4, he says in uh, chapter 3, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Paul said, I have learned how to abound in the ways. But you get into Philippians, is a Continue encouragement to the church. So he says this in verse 24. He says, Rejoice in the law always, and again I say rejoice. That your moderation will be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God we pass it all understanding. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true, what sort of things are honest, what sort of things are just, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are lovely, what sort of things are good before, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on the experience. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. God of peace shall be with you. It's a marvelous exhortation of Paul to the church, not just for them, but for us. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Paul encouraging us to rejoice in the Lord. We were thinking, you know, sometimes folks say you get into a joy, but sometimes I don't feel like rejoicing. So that happens. But don't ever get to the point where not only do I not feel like rejoicing, I just don't even feel like continuing. That's why I want to encourage you that even in those tough moments that, 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 that. You don't feel like rejoicing. You can find a reason to. Even if you don't feel like it, like I'm beating you up, you can still find a reason to. So Paul, why did you church and say, rejoice? Our rejoicing should be made known. We should be the people who rejoice. Anybody ever rejoice? 
time it does. Just talking to folk and just say, man, you just don't know how good God has been to me. And just let folk know that we serve a mighty good God. We serve a mighty good God. I'm thankful to our God. And so, what Paul is encouraging them to do, and what helped them when you are discouraged, one of the biggest things that will help you is to keep your eye on the Lord. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always again, I say rejoice. Then he says this, he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. The constant understanding that the Lord is with us. That the Lord is at hand. We know that, amen. So, but, but, but listen, listen. Sometimes you become so discouraged, you forget that God's still with you. Can you tell me that, 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 that things can happen and then the actually cause us to forget that God is with us? The Lord is at hand. So, what we do is we keep our focus on the Lord. I remember thinking that sometimes in life, when we are going through our tough times, we forget about the Lord. And then I'm like, how does that help you? Anybody know? Because I don't know. How does that help you? Keep your eyes on the Lord. Go with me to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. You gotta know God, this is this God, God took care of Israel. God always took care of Israel, led them out of Egypt. And then when he led them out of Egypt, he fed them, took care of them. God did and everything God did for them. And then he provided for them. And God had led them to the promised land, and he's given them the land, the land that I promised you. And so he tells Moses in, in Numbers 13, he says, go into the land. He said, go, uh, uh, go to pick out 12 spies. Send them into the land, the leader of their tribe, and send them to spy out the land to see what the land looked like. And he gave them all the instructions of what to do. And they sent 12 men over there. And they spied out the land. They were supposed to bring back a report of the land. And they did. Not only did they bring back a report, they brought back the substance of the land. It says the land flowed with milk and honey. They brought a cluster of grapes that was so plentiful that a cluster of grapes they had to bear on a pole between two men. Yeah, a land that's filled with milk and honey. Joshua and Caleb and some of the people, we can go in there and we can take the land. But then the ten spies told them we can't do it. Because we saw those giants in the land. And Joshua said, Lord, we Joshua told the people, he said, he's still the people. He said, no, we can go in there and do it. But then the other spies came back and said, no, we can't. He said, we be not able. And when you get to the last verse, he said, we look like grasshoppers in the sun. That's the 10 spies talking to the people. Chapter 14, verse number one, this is what happened, though. It says what? In all the congregation. In all the congregation. Lifted up their voice. They lifted up their voice. And cried. 
through the Spirit, they became discouraged. They lifted up their voice and they cried unto the Lord. Who had dreamed? And the people wept that night. And they wept. This reminds you that, you know, when you become discouraged, you're not the first person to go around. If we become discouraged, we're not the first people of God to become discouraged. But listening to those 12 spies and thinking about what they said, and God has led us out of, out of Egypt, and now we come to the promised land, and now we're telling us we can't even go in because we're not able. And the people wept. They cried that night. But it said, this. And all the children of Israel, all the children of Israel, against what they were saying. Mother, it's amazing what happened when we become discovered. They began to murmur against Moses and Aaron. They, the, 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 the very leaders who brought them out of Egypt and have done and have done for them what they cried to the Lord and said, Lord, deliver us. God delivered them. And now they're wondering again at his Moses and Aaron. Where be they say? The whole congregation said unto them. And the whole congregation, what? Said unto them. They said unto them. For God that we had died. God that we had died. In the land of Egypt. And me. Oh, with God, we had died in this world. Don't let me just bring us out here in this wilderness so we can die. They're discouraged. Oh, and me. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us? To this land. To this land. To fall by the sword. To fall by the sword. That our wives and our children shall be a prey. Our children shall be a prey. We're not better for us to return to us. For us? To go back to oppression? Can you hear this courage in their voice? Because they cry to the Lord because they have become so discouraged of what the Egyptians were doing to them. They were putting hard tasks on them. They had them making brick and wouldn't give them any material to do. And they were oppressing them and they cried to the Lord and the Lord delivered them. But now they get to this point and they say, Well, it's not better that we remain in Egypt. Let's go back to oppression. It's amazing what the journey is. Don't ever, don't ever. Discount somebody being discouraged, like, oh, you ain't got nothing to be discouraged about. Because it's real. It's real, so much so that all they can think about is their present circumstance. It's all they can think about. You say, was it, was it not better that we return to Egypt? But it said, And wherefore has the Lord brought us into this land? Wherefore the Lord brought us to this land? Fall by the sword. So we might fall by the sword. Now our Lord and our children. We're not better than us to return to Egypt. Is it not better than we return to Egypt? But it said, and They said one to another. And they said one to another. Let us make a captain. Let us make a captain. And let us return to Egypt. Let's go back to you. Let us make the captain and let's go back to you. And Moses and Aaron they said, fell on their faces. They fell on their faces. For all the sin. All the days to be made. And Joshua and Caleb rent their clothes. Verse number eight says this. Listen, y'all, I want you to hear this. 
Because even in the midst of discouragement, in despair, this is what we need. Somebody to tell us about God. Is that all right? <laughs> what is it? What is it? That the Lord delight in us. Lord delight in us. That he will bring us into this land. He will bring us to this land. If the Lord delight in us, he will bring us to this land. Go ahead, read. And give it to us. And he will give it to us. A land with four with nothing behind. This is Joshua. Joshua telling me that the Lord delight in us. Go ahead and read what he said. Only rebel not against. Only rebel not against the Lord. The Lord. Neither fear these the people of the land. He said, Don't you fear these folk. Why? For they are bread for us. They are bread to us. Why? Their defense is their defense is party, what? From them. from them, and the Lord is with us. Can I tell you that it doesn't matter how disturbed you are, no matter how, no, no, no matter what kind of despair city is, a simple word, the Lord is with us. It's amazing that somebody just called you and said, Don't be discouraged, the Lord is with us. God is still with us. And it's amazing. It'll encourage you. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. The Lord is at hand. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8. In Hebrews 13 and 8, it says, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God. You see, it's the same God that led him out of Egypt. It's the same God that blessed him in the past, but blessed him today and in the future. It's the same God who has blessed us. When you become discouraged, understand God is still there, still on the throne. And we just need to hear that God is still with us. God ain't gone nowhere. Now it's still in the blessings of business. It is James chapter 1, 17. You see, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, he says, forever. You ever had any kind of blessing in your life? Because we say God is good all the time. If God ever been good to you, he'll be good to you again. We serve a mighty great God, John. Because God is good to us even when we ain't so good. Thank the Lord. But James says in James 1 17, every good gift, God read what he said. Every good and every perfect gift. The good and the perfect gift is where? From above. It's from above. It comes down. And it comes down. From the fall of life. It come down from God. Read. With whom is no better. With whom there is no better than there is no changing with God. No one. Neither shadow of turning. Never shadow of turning. Is that God is sustaining. And sometimes discouragement, sometimes despair will cause us to forget the Lord. Man, if God ever done anything for you. He's still in the blessing business. It's the same. God doesn't change. He said, God doesn't change. There is no shadow of turning. You don't have to worry about the war. People will fail you. You will fail you. But you can count on the Lord. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let me just tell you this. This is what's interesting. And we know this, but just to know this. You see, life ain't fair. Life ain't fair. And unjust things will happen in life. 
Hard times will happen in life. But know this, as much as life is not fair, as, as, as much as injustice will happen, and maybe happen to you more than you think it should, God is still able. And what God wants us to know that, listen, this life is temporal. And it's like, you know, you ever said this, you know, when it rained, it poured. Anybody ever said that? About your son? About, because what that's saying is, listen, you become discouraged. Why is it always happening to me? You're becoming discouraged. But understand, know this, know this. This life is not the final thing. I remember, I got my hurt to tell you this before. I was a girl. These kids were young, we used to watch Toy Story all the time. And um, Toy Story 2, what if the cowboy Buzz Lightyear, they, 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 their owners were moving to a different house. Anyway, long story short, they had been separated from the family and, and they had the little toy car and they had a rocket and they took off and they were flying and they caught up with the moving van. So all the other toys. And when they got to the moving van, the back door was open and they let the little, they let the little car go. And the little car flew in the back of the truck with all the rest of the toys. And then what if tell Buzz Lightyear and said, he said, Buzz, we missed the truck. And Buzz said, we ain't aiming for the truck. Because see, Andy, the little owner, was in the front of the truck with his parents. He said, we ain't aiming for the truck. What he was aiming for is that so they flew and dropped down to the certain room where Andy was. Y'all listen, sometimes we get confused on what we're aiming for, y'all. We ain't aiming for here. Second Corinthians chapter 4, go with me there, verse number, verse number 16. You see, life ain't fair, and circumstances and things are going to happen in life. I, listen, there is no faucet where you can turn off things that will cause you to stop being discouraged. Life is going to continue to happen. But know this, if you can get this, this is not our final destination. Verse 16 says what? This is. For which cause we thank God. For what now? For which cause we thank God. Which cause we, that word thank is give up. For this cause we don't give up. We thank God. What he said? But though our outward man our, perish. Outward man perish. Yet the inward man. Yet the inward man is what? Renewed. He's renewed. So your focus ought to be inward and not outward. And if you focus on the inward, you can be okay. But if you focus on your despair, on your outward circumstance, life will cause you to become discouraged. But we ain't shooting for this life. Go to read what he says. Our light afflictions. He said, because our light affliction, the stuff we go through, is what? Which is but for a moment. It's but for a moment. Working for us a far But it working for us. What? A far more exceeding. A far more exceeding. An eternal weight of glory. It's working for us for that which is eternal. So if we can focus on the eternal, if we can focus on the things that it says in 18, the things that are not seen, 
You see, the things that are seen are temporal. And sometimes all we can focus on is what we see. My circumstance, my situation, I can't go in the heat, I can't go in the canyon. I become discouraged. But if I can focus on what all of those things do to me, it, it helped me to know that there is a greater reward after this life. See, none of us came here to stay. Paul says we are pilgrims, is what the Hebrew writer says. We are just pilgrims passing through. We didn't come here with, with that song we saw. We're camping. Sometimes we're camping out on earth. We ain't camping here. We're camping toward Canaan's land. That's what we had in. And what will help you and what will encourage you to know that this is not my final destination. No matter how bad things get here, I don't have to do this always. If I just hang in there, there is a far more greater weight of glory waiting on me. That's why he says in verse number one of the next chapter, to our outward man, uh, our brother. In this earthly house of our tabernacle world is all. We have the building of God. Eternal in the heaven. Now, this listen, that is the goal, y'all. Heaven. Amen. Yeah. We ain't come here to stay. Although sometimes we get see what will discourage you more than anything. If this is your life and this is all your life, this is everything for your life, and it ain't working. But if you make the next life the right, and everything here is about getting the next life, it's one of the things that will help you not be discouraged, no matter how bad things become. If you will, go back with me to Philippians, brother. This life is just momentary. We just pass it through. He says this, Philippians 4. He said, be careful for nothing. Verse number 6, he said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. What he said is that we should continue in prayer. Luke chapter 18. Verse number one. Jesus spoke a parable to this end. Luke 18 1 says, Jesus spoke a parable to this end that men are always to pray and not to faint. Not to despair. Not to give up. And we are always to pray. By prayer and supplication that to request we may know to God. Always to pray. In the second Thessalonians, is actually first Thessalonians 5 17, it says, Pray without ceasing. And that we are to always pray. So I was thinking, in, in this pandemic, I know as, as I've joined, um, um, I, actually, I, I, several times I've joined the straight lane to the party. And the garden house does a new prayer every day. We do a scripture, words of encouragement, and then we do prayer. It's always been encouraging. And I remember thinking how that, that, that this pandemic will cause us to pray more. But it's not just pandemic, but it's life. It's, 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 it's when you become disturbed. That's what should happen that we should pray. And you know that. Amen. But can I tell you, don't forget to pray. See, that's the thing. Don't forget to pray. That men are always to pray and not to say. 
And so I'm just, for me, I, I, I'm just need to pray more. That, that may not relate to you. But when you begin to pray because of, because of circumstance, because of life, because of the discouragement, it actually calls you to begin to pray for all the stuff you should have been praying for, even when there isn't a thing. See, men are always to pray, not to faint. Romans 12 and verse number 2. Uh, verse number 12. He said, We are to pray. We are to pray. And then we are to do more and more to develop our prayer life. And this pandemic has done that. It has caused us to pray more. But when you're discouraged, that's the time of praying. But you pray all the time. Oh, we should. And maybe the pandemic, not the pandemic itself, but, but moments of discouragement is the thing that will help us and drive us to pray. Romans 12, verse 12, the Bible says what? Rejoice in hope. He said, rejoice in hope. Patience in tribulation. But he said, patience, patience. That's a whole nother sermon. When you're going through stuff, patience in tribulation. And then he says, what? Continuing instant in prayer. He says, continue instant. That is always continue instant in prayer. The same thing Paul told Timothy. He said, preach the word. Be instant and encourage the charge. Be instant in prayer. Be patient in tribulation. Listen, I know we know we need to pray. Amen. Amen. I will remind you that when you're discouraged, that's the time to do it. Anybody ever did anything they didn't feel like doing? You see, because when you become discouraged, pray what you want to do. But can I encourage you this morning that that's the time to do it? That's the time. Oh, you should pray always, but especially in those times when you don't feel like doing it because that's when you need it. Lord, help me. Lord, save me. Lord, be with me. Lord, get me through this. Lord, help me with this. There's a constant prayer. What prayer does, can I tell you this is, if you can hear this, what prayer does more than anything, it tells from us to the Lord. It tells the Lord. Lord, I'm depending on you. See, it speaks to God that, Lord, I need you. I just want to encourage you, listen, don't ever think God doesn't hear us. The Lord will bless our lives if we honestly go to him in prayer. Here's what he says. But by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto you. He says this other thing I don't want you to miss in, in, in verse 26. He says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let me tell you a thing that will help you more than anything when you're discouraged is count your blessing. Everybody say it with thanksgiving. But what with an understanding that he knows we have something to be thankful for. He says, so when you go to God, go to him with thanksgiving. And when you begin to thank the Lord, you start talking about all the stuff you're thankful for. It reminds you of 
God bless you all. Oh, but if you never count your blessing, if you always go to the Lord and you just pray, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, and never say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you for what you've done for my spouse, for my children, Lord, for my parents, Lord, for my life, Lord, for the child, Lord. You start thanking the Lord, you will count your blessing. And what you will realize is, amen, Lord, the Lord has been good to me. And I'm telling you that will encourage you when you're discouraged. Sit down and start praying to the Lord. And before you even ask the Lord for anything, thank Him for everything. It'll bless your life. Because what it'll do is, it'll cause you to see that the Lord has been good to me. And my sisters are doing a study on 1 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter 1, verse 3. The God who had given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And God is if you will realize how much God has done for us. Just the idea, listen, that God has allowed us to be able to assemble here today to worship him. In Psalm 118, I think it's 24, he said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in you. Why? Because of my circumstances? No, but because I know I have so much to rejoice. I know I have so much to be glad about. I'm thankful to my God. Count your blessings. That song said, name them one by one. And it will surprise you. But the Lord is the Anybody ever count your blessings? You ever think about what God has done for you? God, yeah, we serve a mighty good God, y'all. And it's amazing how good God is going to us. Have you ever become discouraged? Have you ever become, you ever, you ever despair? It doesn't matter what it is. Because I'm telling you again, life will discourage you. People will discourage you. That's why we put our faith and our trust in God. Let me hurry, because I got to tell you this, y'all. Listen, count your blessing. And so I won't do the peace, either, because verse, verse number seven says, and the peace of God will pass it. All understanding says, keep the heart. And it says that again at the end of chapter nine, and the peace of God be with you. And I'll tell you that even in the midst of the storm, when God gives you peace, I can give you peace. But what I want to focus on, listen, back, back to verse number eight. He says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever thing are just, whatever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good before, if that be any virtue that be any praise, Think on these things. That's amazing to me. And I tell you, sometimes our despair, our discouragement come because of what we focus on, and, and, and not just that, but what we dwell on. And so what here the Paul said, he said, change your thinking. Sometimes the, the, the whole reason I'm discouraged because all I'm thinking about is the discouragement. And so what, what Paul encouraged in the church, he said, think on these days. Listen, he says, if that will be any virtue, if that will be any prayer, in order for me to have virtue and pray for I need to think of the right thing. 
the thing that's discouraging me, I, I'm not, listen, is I'm dwelling on the wrong spot. You know, it's like going to the Lord, it's like going to God to pray for something. And then after I pray, you know, what we ought to do is we go to God and pray, and then let's say, and we leave it there. Anybody ever did that? Go to God in prayer and then leave it. Don't get back up and then start dwelling all over and all again. Change your thinking. Change what you think about. Because the things you think about is the thing that's discouraging you. So what you want to do is with that beginning. In their praise, in that being in virtue, in the call, think on things that are love, and think on things that are pure, things that are good. If I'm in a situation where I'm discouraged because of what I'm thinking about, I'm going to stop thinking about that and start thinking about the good times. You got to think something different. Think on these things. As simple as it is, it's real. I think it messes up. Because we dwell on the wrong thing. It doesn't mean you shouldn't think about stuff that needs to be taken care of, but you shouldn't let it overwhelm you. When you find where you become in this spirit, because you just up, you are despair or whatever it is, change your thinking. Whether well, it's your, your job, your family, your relationship, whatever it is, if it's discouraging you, change what you're thinking about. Because life will beat you up. And so we need to change. I just give you this last thing he says in verse 29. Paul said this in verse 9. He says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, I want you to do it. Implement it. See, what will also help you is to become busy in doing things of God. You know, if you can change not just your thinking, but what you do, and you say, you know what, man, man I'm just, even when you discover it, are you kind of feeling this guy? The phone up. Well, I'm sorry, just get out your pocket. Put your phone out and call somebody. Encourage them. Call somebody that needs the Lord. The things you've seen and heard of me in me, he said, I want you to do it. Get busy, as Jesus said, when his parents had been uh, had gone all the way back to Jerusalem to find him. He said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? What a helpless walk in our despair. If we are busy with the things of God. You know, it's trying to do more for the Lord. What can I do for the Lord? Not come to worship on Sunday. Let well, me not say that for Sunday. Not just come to worship on Sunday. But past that, during the week, what can I do for the Lord? Did it encourage you? Did it encourage you? Because as I started, it'll change your focus. And to take the focus off of you and put it back on you. God, I just want to encourage you this morning. Don't despair of life. But it's, whether, you, whether it's been because of the pandemic or just circumstances in life, don't despair. Be encouraged. The Lord is at hand. God is still able. The same God who blessed us in the past. Will bless us in the future. God, I'm thankful for the God. I'm thankful that He has.
divine salvation in Jesus. That we can aim for something different than this life. Because no matter how tough this life is or has been or will be, we look forward to the glory that shall be revealed in him. I pray God bless us. I pray God bless us. That we keep striving to be more than this morning, if you're here and you're not a Christian, you ought to be one. Hear that Jesus came from heaven and suffered, died on the cross for our sins. Believe that. Be willing, after you believe that, to put your way down. To repent. I'm going to change my life. I'm no longer going to live the way I've been living. And I'll stand before man and confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Then I submit to being buried in baptism with me for the remission of my sins. You become a new creature in Christ. They're faithful unto death, and you will receive the crown of God. If you're a Christian, if you haven't been all that God would have you to be, I want to encourage you to repent, confess, we're very good things for you. God will forgive me, and all of us together keep working out our soul salvation. So if you stand in, you guys just make the numbers together. You stand and together we sing. There's a permanent grace just for you and me. Let us face the whole Thank you. I have uh, several of my siblings to uh, continue the prayer situation. First, my brother, my younger brother, brother, he uh, just had surgery and, and he had something in his stomach that was happening. And he is going to recover. He's recovered. He's just uh, through a lot of pain and shoulder burns. And it's discouraging. And they, they pray for him, Saul, 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 and Lord, James Walker is my old sister. Just did a few of hospice to me and took the world itself. Her kids are, uh, and she stayed in the room. They took care of her. They all had to make the kids stay in the room. So she stayed in the room. She said, I'm going to go And I decided to have to pay it. Thank you. 
If I can hear you, I would like to say, thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for being my God. Thank you, Father, for the avenue of prayer that we can approach your throne. And then I request to be made known to you. I believe you heard the call of the Lord. Both uh, pray for the family members. Father, we pray that you will bless those situations in the that you know what their needs are. Father, we ask for blessing be for the brothers and sisters that are knowing that we know all about what they are dealing with. And we know that you are able in all things. Father, we take those concerns to you and pray that you will bless them. To do it, to deal with whatever those circumstances and situations are, that you will make those things better and higher for them as they continue to live up. Thank you for the bless us to go to the hospital. Bless them to look at the hospital. All those that are doing the good. Every procedure is done. We can thank you and our body for doing it. For giving it. But then, too, you help us to be a source of encouragement to you. Join this time that she would not be disturbed. That whatever we need to do, we can. To be a source of encouragement. I want to pray you bless us individually as we stand in this individual Hear all of our concerns, all the things that's on our hearts, but all of our families, and all the things that we desire for them. But especially for salvation. Bless us and help us. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Larry, for that inspiring message this morning. This is part of the service for the Bible people in the first day of the week. Look at the reason here. I'm going to read the scripture from Acts 20, verse 35. Acts 20, verse 35. And it reads up. And everything I have shown you that I've worked hard, we must have the week, 
And this is where you're going to see a lot of words. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So that I pray. So help Father, that we that's your best of all things. We we'll pray for you, we'll give you a pain, bring your voice over to you. That's the one that gave you one. That's the one that's not going to have to give. Be blessed to give Christ's name, so I'm sure say that. Page 589. What a She lost the trade. She traded. And we had given things to break it with his feet, which is our body, which is broken for you. His feet in the name of Jesus. Pray for us. Grace to the Almighty Father, we pray for you. Father, we're approaching our throne of spirit to bless us our body. Father, we're to the kingdom of bless us, the kingdom of bless us. We pray as we ask in Christ Jesus' name. At the same time, also, we took the cup. And we had some sin. This cup is the New Testament in our faith. We do it almost as if it were the Lord's cup. So, after this bread, after this cup, we do share the Lord's death and do it back. But for all, this is what we need to do and see this cup. Let it be a good part of the Bible. Let it be a good part of the Bible. Let it be a good part of the Bible. Let it be a good part of the Bible. 
It's been a great day, amen. It's always good for us to come to assemble and to come together to worship God in spirit and truth. It's good to see everyone that's here. And for those who are tuning in with us via social media, we're so thankful that you have taken the time to do so. And we hope that this assembly, this worship, has been a source of encouragement for you, brother Elders. We thank you for. Um, always uh, inspiring us with the preaching of God's word. We're thankful for the challenge that we receive each week in this book that, um, to, to draw close and draw near to the will of God as we strive to, to show the world Christ through our lives. We're thankful for you. We will continue to pray for you and pray for you. Um, remember, um, brothers, the first Saturday in next month, we'll have a brother's meeting after we uh, set up Saturday morning, which is at 10 o'clock. So we would start somewhere between 10.30 and 11 o'clock uh, for our brother's meeting. So start thinking about that and uh, please be part of that. And just want to encourage everyone to be part of um, the various opportunities that, that we come together via um, social media, via Zoom. Our ladies class is really going well. Um, let's see if some of us have had a really good number on Tuesday. So we're proud of that. So continue to, um, to, to talk that opportunity up. And for those who have not had the opportunity and would like to be part of that, you can just get with uh, the fair and the one of the ladies as part of that class. Remember our midweek Bible study um, on Wednesday nights at seven. We our numbers continue to go up week after week. We had a, a good number this past week. We're thankful for that. Let's continue to uh, to build on that. Um, we got a good number here today in our assembly, which our numbers have started to grow each week. So let's continue to, to, to build on the opportunities for us to come together and understand it's so good uh, to see the Thomas family uh, been away from us. And we're so good. We're thankful that you're here today and always encouraged by your presence. As well as Sister Dick, it's good to see, to see you. And, uh, and we just continue to pray for others who are, who are considering um, returning back to the assembly in person in any way that we can serve you or help you or answer any questions or concerns that you might have. 
we we stand ready and, 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 and we just continue to pray we for you. We understand that there are uh, issues that um, will cause you uh, will keep you away from the assembly in person. And so uh, we just want you to know we understand and we can pray, we're praying for you. In any way that we can serve you, we stand ready. Um, are there any other announcements? Okay, there's no other announcements. If you would stand, we have a couple of songs and close the prayer. Oh, yes. Uh, for those who want to, uh, we will meet again this Thursday at 6 p.m. on Zoom with the Benevolence Ministry. And so um, that that process of, um, of going to, uh, getting our ministry more organized uh, and Creating some, some guidelines and, and what have you, um, and just to make that more um, more productive for for who we are and what we want to do. So please come and be part of that meeting at six o'clock on this week. And I apologize that I did not put a time last this past week for that meeting, and some thought it was at seven, but it's at six o'clock, and we will sit down and have a conversation. All right, then if you would please stand and have a closing song and close the prayer. Yeah, and even if you're beloved, can I admit you, uh, Sister Dent? Uh, just so you know, uh, it's this event, you know, I've had in COVID and fought back to that and you get to see it. So did uh, Alan Young uh, just a uh, couple of weeks ago, and I was here and get to see this came in the uh, COVID and this recently and fought like they were this year. And now here's what I'm talking about, you know, so it's always good. We plan for each other, but also let's reach out to each other. So we know what's going on with each other so that we can pray for those things that we have this. Amen. Amen. Page nine seventy six. Lord, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. 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 I shall Have a beautiful weekend.